Alrighty, World Lit students, we're going to talk about chapter 5, uh, which is kind of an important pivotal point of the story because we see how um, Ralph is kind of taking a dramatic turn for the way things are going. And we really get to see the separation between the two leaders, Jack and Ralph. And so as we start, as we look at the uh, beginning of the story, or beginning of chapter 5, I want to point to you the third paragraph on how um, Ralph is described here. As we see, you know, Golding kind of paints this kind of calm um, uh, picture of the beach, but there's kind of, there's this tension in the air. And you see Ralph, and, and look, at, look at this line on the very top. This meeting must not be fun, but business. And we kind of see uh, Ralph leading to this point by recognizing that he, as a leader, needs to be firmer in making sure that things get done. Because up until this point, you'll remember that things hadn't gotten done, and uh, fires were not staying lit, um, and that's their main form of rescue. The shelters weren't being built. People weren't doing their assigned chores. You know, people were using the restroom right by their shelter, their tents, and it's very unsanitary. And, and Ralph is kind of losing his grip as a leader, and he's recognizing he needs to do something. And so you see the tone that Golding is setting here, as you see in, uh, in a couple uh, paragraphs down. Um, where are we? Yes, right. The grim mood and the fault at the fire. And so the the atmosphere that's being set here by Golding is it's grim. And um, you even feel the way that the setting is, it feels weird. I mean, look at the assembly, how it's described it was roughly a triangle, but irregular and sketchy, like everything they made. And so there becomes like this kind of discomfort for the readers as we witness this assembly that Ralph is, um, has called. And as Ralph takes the seat, as we continue down, Ralph turns to the chief seat. Um, look at the third sentence there. That was why the place looked so different. You know, they're having this assembly late. The scenery just looks so different. So Golding is doing that so that we have a sudden shift of the way that we're viewing life on the island, right? And you see Ralph, if you read the dialogue, Ralph is he's stern. He's, he's, uh, he's giving very short, terse, and very tense responses. And it's almost like he's, he's not playing around here. He's getting down to business. And and the the boys there they're they're not happy about it. I mean, look at how he he says another thing. He he points out the things that needs to get done, and he keeps pointing out things. And um, look right here. He says, and another thing. He's he's adding another thing that the people are messing up. And rudely, without the conch, which we know is the talking stick and the thing that people need, it's the order that um, clings on to civilization. There's too many things. Someone just blurts it out. And that's why the conch is so symbolic, because the conch symbolizes um, order and maintaining civilization. But when someone calls out without the conch, it shows you that they're trying to break that civilization. And you kind of see how it, it, it carried on from chapter four when we saw Roger, who... He was throwing rocks at a little boy. And, and think about throwing rocks at someone. If that hits you, it's not a fun day. And Roger's throwing it, but he's intentionally missing. And that was your whole assignment of that um, discussion was to look at what that quote was entailing. And it's Roger knowing that it's wrong and holding on to the little bit of order that was left in the previous society and the previous world that he had left that was telling him not to do wrong things. It's his conscience. But you can kind of see here that's kind of changing. 
the boys are not listening to that conscience anymore. And that really hits true with with uh, with Jack. And uh, let's go down to the point when Jack really breaks the rules. Um, let's see. So see, even here, um, as people are trying to talk, Jack still maintained decorum. And he, he follows the rules. He stands up, takes the conch in order to talk. But as it keeps going, you'll see that, uh, let's see here, we keep going. Little ones. Right here. So as it continues and uh, Ralph is slowly losing uh, order, Jack was the first to make himself heard. He had not got the conch and thus spoke against the rules, but nobody minded. And you can see the descent into uh, losing order that Ralph had so desperately wanted to maintain and the divide um, that is being created between Jack and Ralph. And then we continue and a very important theme of fear with the beast comes to play. And in fact, that's the title of this chapter and chapter six. And so pay attention to that. What, what is Golding trying to say through these chapters by calling it the beast of the water or the beast from water? And um, thinking about how each person deals with fear. So think about how Ralph uh, thought about the beast and how people were reacting to it, how Jack reacted to the beast how the little ones were reacting to the beast, how Piggy, how the rest of the hunters, think about their reaction to the beast and that'll give you a good indication of the theme of fear that Golding is trying to convey. And there's a very uh, important um, quote that I want us to get here. Um, as we continue reading, they're talking about the beast. And where are we? Oh, right here. And look at this quote here. Um, this is supposed to be Ralph, right? Yeah. Oh no, it was Piggy. He said, and Piggy is the, the voice of reason. And that's really, he's, he's the intelligent one that Ralph leans on in order to uh, make good rules and to maintain that order. And look at what Piggy is saying here. What are we, humans or animals or savages? What's grown-ups going to think? going off, hunting pigs, letting fires out, and now? And so you see um, that Piggy is the one who's trying to maintain order, but look at how Jack responds. He says, shut up, you fat slug, <laughs> in a very mean-spirited adolescent boy way. And you see them fighting against reason and Piggy. And so then what happens at the end is uh, the the chasm is is created it's it's too great and um jack decides that he's gonna you know start his own thing and move away from ralph's leadership and the divide happens and so uh in the next video we'll talk about chapter six and how the story continues to develop